Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. This week's tutorial is about saving form entries to your website database. So anytime someone comes to your website, to your contact form and fills it out, normally it just sends to the admin email address. There's no connection you know, to the website database. Um, but the problem can be is you may miss submissions and also you may just want to have them in your database for other reasons, which we'll get to. So you don't want to miss any because sometimes, you know, someone will be like, Hey, I sent an email, you didn't reply. And it's like, well, I don't see it right now. If you save them to your database, you will always have them. So every time someone submits it, it will be saved there. So I'm going to show you how to do that using our plugin, the Divi contact form helper, and then talk about what you can do with those entries and you know, some other reasons why you may want to do this. Now, like I said, of course, you will need to use our plugin, the Divi Contact Form Helper. We have over 100 main features in this plugin and we keep adding more. So it really is, is a crazy, like needed addition. It upgrades the existing contact form module. I want that to be clear. It's not a separate module, but it is a plugin that extends the existing module and it adds things like saving to the database and a whole lot of other things. Um, but go ahead and install that. If you're a member of our Divi Adventure Club membership, well, then you already have access to it or you can purchase it individually. Now, the first thing we'll do is actually go into the module. That's where all the settings are. So I'm going to just show you that. Here's a contact form module and I open the settings and you will notice there are a lot of settings that are added by our plugin and things get changed in here. Um, but submission entries, this toggle right here is where you want to just double check. Now by default, this will be enabled, okay, to save entries to the database. Um, but like I say, just come in here and double check it. Make sure that is enabled. That's the most important thing. Now there are other options here like saving file uploads if you have a file upload field, saving them different places, you know, collecting user agent details like the browser and IP address. Obviously you need to be careful with that based on where you're located and regulations, but you know, cookies for tracking, um, URL parameters and different things. Okay. Yeah. There's a whole lot of things, but anyway, we have that setting enabled. That is the most important thing. Now we have to ensure the form has a unique ID. Typically, you know, you don't have any, connection with that module to the database. Like what I mean is like you could have any module here, right? If I add um, a text module, I mean the module's just here on the page, right? It's not doing anything. It's not connected to anything. And it's the same way with the contact form module. It kind of works independently. So we need to connect that to the database. Well, to do that, we have a special feature in the admin label toggle right here contact form unique ID. And you can see it's a series of letters and numbers, right? And dashes. Um, that there is what identifies this very specifically this module in the database. So everything about like the name and message and all the details that you enter are going to be, you know, connected using this ID. So um, that's very important that you have that. We do have more information in our documentation about that like if you happen to not have one here or like, for example, if I go and duplicate this, that's not good. Now, now each one will be the same. It has to be unique. Um, that's very important. Um, but you can check our docs for more things. Now, after you already, you know, send entries, you can go to the back end and just go over to contact form and you'll see there's entries and different settings here. Um, you can see this list, it's a list of entries that I submitted for testing and, you know, videos like this. You can see that there's an entry number, the name of the person, the email address, read or unread status. You can see that, um, read by me and the date that it was read. Now these two were not read. So watch if I click on uh, this one and then go back, you can see that it changed. Here's the, the that ID and then the date that it was submitted, the date and time. So again, if I um, go and view one of these entries, um, this one I was testing the signature field. I don't know if I have any good entries that have a lot of data. See, I don't have much data in these, but any of the form fields are going to show here under entry details. So basically, you know, the, whatever the label is in the module 
and then the name, email address, email address. So it's like gonna be the form or the field label and then the value. Down below, like these are all entries from the same user, which happens to be me in this case. Over here on the right, I could delete this entry. Um, I could reply to it. You know, if I click this, it actually brings up a reply form. Um, I don't think that's used too much, but it is there. I could create an email template if for some reason I wanted to um, use a template for sending new messages. But uh, another option, I can create a post. Like, for example, if someone's submitting a testimonial as a review and you want to create a post with it, so that's a cool feature. Then there's meta details, um, just different things. Here's an ID of the submitter, that's me and my name and the contact form and the page it was submitted from, the refer URL and the timestamp. Now user agent details, that again would be like the IP address, the browser, operating system, things like that. Now it was um, disabled in the module so it's not showing here. You can also export entries so I could click on export CSV and I could you know give it a name and I can actually choose which form I'm referring to. I can even do it by date range and I can export that. Um, by the way, you can follow along here. I have all this written. Um, we also have an option to back up your entries. So here, I'll just go over here to automations and Divi contact form helper in the, in the theme option. So I have all these settings and then automations. So I can um, do an auto backup. I can choose an email address every week, every month, etc. And I could also auto delete entries. Now, the reason for that is um, I think some countries or you know certain regulations require you to delete it after 14 days. I don't know, things like that. So we added this feature because of that. So it's kind of nice, you know, um, save them 14 days or you know 30 days or whatever, 90 days, um, and then you don't have to go in here and have you know thousands of entries after a while. You will know, keep deleting. Um, yeah, it's just some extra cool features related to entries that I wanted to cover. Um, you know, since we're talking about saving entries to the database, I kind of wanted to cover like all the extra things that the plugin offers. And like I said, there's over 100 main features now in the plugin, and it is extremely popular. It's definitely one of the most popular Divi plugins in the world. And we're so thankful for your support. It's just, it's, it's so cool to be able to keep adding like crazy new features. It's a premium plugin that's super affordable. Like if you, if you were to take the features and compare them to like some of the form plugins out there, um, this plugin is like extremely cheap. And plus we're integrating with Divi. The cool thing is like, if you wanted to remove it, you could remove it and your contact form would still work. So it's like, you just want to have all the extra features, but it's kind of one of those things, you don't have to replace the module and it's our unique, unique way of doing it. So I hope you appreciate that. You can check it out, you can ask any questions you have. There you go, now you know how to save entries to your database, you'll never lose them and you can do other things with them. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, if you did, you can subscribe. We do tutorials every single week and we have been doing that for years now. So we have hundreds and that's what you'll get here on this channel. All right, we'll see you in the next video.